And deal, in deal. Uh, Salt Lake City, they use 3.7 pounds of sugar, and in Nigeria, they use <laughs> yes. The point is, there are some 800 people here, and you're all going to make what you think is the best product in your store. It doesn't matter where you are or what you call it. If this is what you believe is going to be the best product, whether it's six pounds of sugar, eight pounds, or whatever, then you make that. Call it what you want, and get your customers liking it. It. Simple. Mm -hmm. Simple? Simple. Okay, Steve has asked us to make pumpkin pies, pumpkin ice cream pies. And you can indeed sell these in your store. They're quite simple to make. The, the pie shells are pretty much everything you need uh, to put it in. And they're 99 cents at, at any of the stores. And they come in... Uh, they come in just like this in the stores, and uh, when you uncrimp them and make them ready to uh, fill for right from the machine, after the <laughs> uncrimping, you get this, which when you take the label out, you put it on here, slap your own label on it, what it is, put it in the freezer, and every time you make some ice cream, make a couple of pies and sell them for 10 bucks a pie, uh, and they're great for people to take home with them uh, for going out to dinner with other friends or, or house parties, whatever. So that'll work. Any questions? And these come in this kind of crust, which is a graham cracker, and they also come in an Oreo cookie crust. They're both 99 cents, and uh, they work pretty good. And as you'll see, they fill right from the machine. Pretty good. You can, I did that already. You did Santa Thomas? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, while you were talking. Oh, all right. Now, what you can do if you want is you can Take get these off. ready. All right. While I get the ice cream ready. Okay. So we're going to make pumpkin ice cream to put in the pie shells and have pumpkin pie ice cream pies. Pumpkin ice cream. You know, you get the point. Uh, in the store, I usually make pumpkin praline, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, we're just going to make the uh, filling for the pies out of pumpkin. So, and since I didn't bring my handy dandy drill mixer, which you're all familiar with from the other videos, we'll simply whisk it, like in the old days. So we'll take some pumpkin, now this isn't, um, what's the other one, pumpkin, uh, what, there are two, this is real pumpkin, the other one is, what? Pumpkin pie filling, alright, we don't use pumpkin pie filling, I guess you could, but I prefer to sort of make my own. And we'll take some pumpkin Pumpkin, all natural, no preservatives, 100% pure pumpkin. And we'll take a little of that, put it in here. And as you know, I'm a big proponent of going supermarketing instead of using uh, uh, cans and jars and pastes and stuff like that. And now Steve's a big fan of that too. We changed the name of the, the course from lunch with the president to make it fresh make it because fresh. you converted me over to buying all my ingredients at the supermarket. There you go. We'll also add uh, two tablespoons of cinnamon. So this is about a tablespoon. And a little caramel. Well, we'll add that to the machine. Oh, you know what we don't have, Steve? Mix. <laughs> I have mix. Okay. <laughs> uh, and brown sugar. Brown sugar. Let's add uh, 24, 12. Let's add about 12 ounces of brown sugar. 
What? What? What's the recipe? We're making it now. Get your pen out. <laughs> How much brown sugar? How much brown sugar? You know, we were wearing tie-dye before you were born. You got to write this stuff down. 12 ounces of sugar. Brown sugar. This is dark brown sugar. How much caramel? I didn't put anything in yet. We're getting there. We have two cans of pumpkin. Each can is 29 ounces, so it's about that much. And then we have how much brown sugar? Good man. Uh, how much cinnamon? Right. Two tablespoons of cinnamon. Uh, can I have brown sugar? Okay. A little vanilla. A little vanilla. Uh, we'll add about uh, five ounces of vanilla. Okay? He's writing furiously. About five ounces of vanilla. And then, this stuff. This stuff. This is 10%. No. Today it's 14. Today it's 14%. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, we usually use 10%, don't we, Steve? Yes. However? <laughs> no, it's never free. Um, we were testing some new designs on our 44-quart machine, and we wanted to use a higher fat, so we brought in the higher fat. If we were up in New York or north, anything uh, in a cooler climate, we would raise the fat content up, 12, 14, 16. In Florida here, we use 10% because, again, it's so hot, the higher fat uh, makes you uh, lethargic and sweat and all that. So 10 does very well in Florida, Georgia, uh, across the Gulf states, Texas. Uh, anywhere other than that, I would go 12 or 14. And we're going to use five quarts. Of semi-frozen. It is. <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday. Mister, hmm. <laughs> that will you work? Well, I'm going to. Uh, we can let the machine do this too. However, what we'll do is we'll, uh, in order to mix up the pumpkin the brown sugar, the vanilla, and the cinnamon will add a little mix so we can whisk. And then we'll whisk this up. Don't forget to remind me to add the caramel. Because I don't want to put the caramel in here, it's too gummy, you can put that right in the machine. Theoretically, you could put all this right in the machine, which is what I do in my store. But in deference to Steve's home here, I will whisk it first. Why is that? I don't know, you always look at me cross-eyed when I throw all the stuff in the machine, turn it on. I look at you cross-eyed over everything. <laughs> That's no difference. The machine can take it. Nuts, cookies, candies, anything you want to throw in there, go right ahead. Okay. So the most important thing when you're adding stuff to your machine is? Make sure the gate's closed. Make sure the gate's closed. And you'll stop, you'll, I mess up, you'll mess up, and you'll wear the stuff. Uh, and you'll mop up for an hour, but try to remember as best you can. So this, by the way, this is what it looks like whisked up. <laughs> it's a visual. And to get that good stuff in the bottom, we'll whisk again. What? No, it'll be probably three gallons. Yes, we're not 
We're not putting in... Uh, in my machine, it's a 24-quart machine, so I would put in 10 quarts of mix, and all my recipes are based on that, and then if you have a small machine, you just do percentage. Uh, so in mine, I would get six gallons out. In this one, since we're using half, I presume we'll get about three gallons out. Actually, you're only putting in uh, uh, five quarts of total product, so you're going to get uh, 10 back. 10 what? 10 quarts uh, complete. Which is? Uh, two and a half gallons. Right. We'll get about three gallons. <laughs> because, don't forget, we're adding two cans of pumpkin. We're adding brown sugar. We're adding caramel. So that'll bulk up also. Well, I presume we'll get about three gallons. So which machine is that? Is that the 12? This is a 12. It makes one tub. And then the 24 is the exact same physical size but it makes two tubs. When you say tub, what, at what capacity is that? Two and a half gallon or three gallon. The, the, quickly, the confusion is ice cream, is, homemade ice cream is in two and a half gallon capacities because the mix comes in five gallon bags. So you put uh, half of that in there. Um, Italian ices, we're using sugar and water. So I can adjust the size of the batch uh, by the amount of water I use. Why do I want to make a, a little bit more Italian ice? Because it takes longer to freeze with the higher sugar content. So I want the maximum capacity out of the machine, but when you're making ice cream, everything in the industry is based on two and a half gallons. All your formulas, all your measurements. So 20 quart machine for ice cream, 24 quart machine for uh, Italian ice, or 10 quart and 12 quart. Two thirty-four. We're full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. And now we'll add what? Uh, and how much caramel should we add? This is purely subjective. What's the answer? A lot. Okay, we'll add it all then. But he hasn't. He hasn't started freezing yet. So at any time you can turn on the refrigeration. Any time. Now would be a good time. <laughs> I'm just letting it mix a little more. Oh, it's going to mix for eight minutes. What is the time waits for no man there, uh, Jeff? You got a train to catch or what? <laughs> okay, so now it's being mixed up. The caramel's in there, and it's the, the blade, the dasher, the beater is turning at 234 revolutions per minute. So it's really mixing it up pretty good. Uh, and now we'll turn on the refrigerant. So the cylinder that's in there, behind the cylinder are the coils that cool it off. And what are you doing? Setting a timer. Okay. And, uh, and then the blades of the dasher scrape the sides continually. So as it gets colder and solidifies, then it scrapes it into the middle, and ice cream happens. It's a beautiful thing. So any questions about this recipe? Now, remember, this is your store, and you can decide that you want to have pumpkin walnut ice cream, pumpkin praline ice cream, pumpkin chip ice cream. And it's as simple as now opening this, throwing in what you want, and that's it. Uh, you can have pumpkin peppermint if you want. You can do anything. Uh, creating an ice cream formula is your job and you will be both an artist and a chemist. You'll be an artist in thinking what you want to, what you want the final product to be. You'll become a chemist when, as Steve noted, you add five quarts of mix, ten quarts of mix, three quarts of mix, and then proportionally to the amount of mix, that's how much ingredients you add. So if you're adding let's say in my machine at the store, 10 quarts of mix, which is one whole bag, that whole bladder goes into my machine. Now I know that I can't simply add two cans of pumpkin because it, it won't have the bold flavor I want. So what I'll do is probably double it uh, and add four cans of pumpkin. Caramel, I'll add more caramel. But the secret is that as it's happening, what you want to do about now is taste it, and then you can amend it while it's still working, before it freezes. So 
I guess this isn't recommended, right? That's outstanding. <laughs> uh, it's perfect, but if it needed more caramel, throw it in. If you decide, well, you know what? Could use some nuts. Throw in the nuts. Uh, I'm not here, you know, uh, I don't make anything from selling his machines, but I got to tell you, uh, this is the machine to use if you want to throw anything in there. You can throw bags of chocolate chunks in there if you don't want chips, if you want chunks, uh, nuts, cherries, fruit, frozen fruit, anything you want to do, just throw it in and it'll make the ice cream. But now it's pretty perfect for our pies and you'll get to taste it because we have one, two, three, four, five pies and they're each probably about 16 ounces. 16 times 5 is 80, 90, 80, right? What a smart audience today. Uh, so that's 80 ounces, that's two and a half quarts. So two and a half quarts, and you said we're going to get what? A couple of gallons out. Yeah. So we'll be, you'll get some, so don't worry about that. And then we'll take the pies, put the covers on them, crimp them down again, and the pies, by the way, I fill them right from the machine. I don't know if you That's do fine. or not. Okay. Uh, it's just a, a feel on the gate opening and closing. Obviously, you don't want to do this because then you'll be wearing a pie. <laughs> so you do it nicely, and you, you don't want to overfill the pie shells. Well, you'll see that when we do that. I used to overfill the pie shells in the beginning, and uh, no good. You put the covers on, they leak out the sides. It's better to have less than more. When... Uh I first started making pies and Jeff was still in high school. I thought that if I took the pie fillings <clears throat> that I bought and put them in the freezer, so much the better. They're cold, the ice cream's cold, it's all going to work great. What actually happened is by putting this soft crust into the freezer, and as soon as you picked it out, it cracked. It cracked in a million directions like a spider's web. It was a mess. So work with it at room temperature. The other thing it did by freezing it is putting this frozen and then the cold ice cream, it made like a barrier. So when you went to cut it, the two fell apart. By using room temperature and then putting the cold ice cream in and freezing it, you'll get just a fractional amount of melt, which will bond with the, uh, uh, the filling. So like on this one, I can see there's a little crack around the edge. It won't matter because the ice cream will bond to it and then I can cut it. So instead of selling a scoop of ice cream for, what do you get, Jeff? For what? Four dollars. <laughs> you could probably. What? Whoa! What was that? Four dollars you get? No. Six dollars. Six dollars. Okay. Well, let's say, let's say the national average. You're getting three dollars, three fifty. Instead of getting three fifty for a large portion of ice cream, you could get about four or five dollars for just a slice, which people could eat. Or they're taking the whole pie home for how much yeah. do you sell pie? Ten for? bucks. So for you could send it home for fifteen dollars. You're, you're, okay, I'm not arguing. He makes money. He used to be a liberal, well, then he started thinking, making money. Now he's a conservative. Thinking, my thinking, We're happy to have him. My thinking on the pie price is they're not going to buy the pie and eat it there. So what I want to do is I want to sell them a $6 ice cream and then have them take a pie home. So the $10 is not only, there's profit in the $10, believe me, but it's also the goodwill. My label's on that thing. And they're going to go home and they're usually going to share the pie or take it to another person's house. And there that spreads my customer base. And you know what happens with a pie? Uh, it's 11 o'clock at night and, oh, I'm just going to take a little sliver. And you take a little sliver. And, and this thing lasts for a long time in your freezer. And every time you have it, you're not thinking it's delicious. You're thinking of Jeff Markow. And, and so he's got his name out in front there for days on end while you're eating this pie. I, I just wanted the sound effect. Oh, no way here, right? No, because you've got a lot of sugar in there. Um, yes? Uh, I'm just gonna get into the timer. Uh, one big question I always get is, why don't I have timers on my machines? Capigiani puts a timer Steve, on why there. don't you have timers on your machine? Well, because if you put that timer right there, this now has to have National Sanitation Foundation approval if you build the way I do and nobody does. Uh, it also has to have underwriters laboratories. Uh, this ETL that you see that they made up in Europe, it's not a real rating. All it is is a manufacturer promising to build a good machine. 
Underwriters Laboratory does sneak attacks in here once a month, and uh, they inspect whatever they want to. They come through the door, and everything stops, and the UL inspectors look at everything. And we pay $1,000 a month for the right to them to do that. Uh, so this $6 timer would cost about $250 uh, if it met the codes. Now, Capigiani has a timer, Technogel has a timer, Bravo has a timer, Emory Thompson doesn't have a timer because we know how to make ice cream. And we realize that the higher the sugar content of the product, the longer the freezing time. So if vanilla is, say, seven and a half, eight minutes, um, Oreo cookie, chocolate chip cookie, cookie monster is going to be around nine or ten minutes because you're getting all that sugar from the cookies. More sugar, longer freezing time. If I always have that timer going off at eight minutes, my vanilla is always perfect. Everything else stinks. And I got to come over. I've seen them do it at trade shows. I'm there making ice cream, and I see the other competition kind of go over, and they turn the dial to turn the machine back on because they know it's not ready. Uh, so why bother? Besides, $234, your machine is down. You have to get a refrigeration guy in. That's just the part cost to meet UL and NSF. It's not my cost. Uh, not, not what I charge. Your machine is down. If it's an Italian machine, you can wait uh, weeks, months. I've heard people wait six months because the machine went down because of a stinking timer. If this $6 timer goes bad, I throw it out and I go buy another one. Or if you really want to get fancy, go out and buy like, you know, Jeff, like Jeff does. He left his home because he wants to be you know, the common man. He uses a Rolex diamond-crusted watch. And he writes it off to the company because that $12,000 watch is essential to making the ice cream. And if there's anybody in the IRS out there, I never heard of them. Uh, but, you know, see how simple it is? I won't be here next month. I'll be in jail. <laughs> it's like Paula. When pa Paula bakes. Once a year, Paula bakes something. And when she does, uh, she sets the timer for 28 minutes. And then she goes in with a fork and she stabs it. You know, not because it's alive, uh, but she wants to see if it's ready. It's not ready at 28 minutes. She's just judging where she's at. If her oven had a timer that shut down the whole oven and cooled off instantly in 28 minutes, all the different ingredients, all the different products, cherry pie, uh, biscotti, whatever, would be uh, either overcooked or undercooked. You done? Done. Okay. And so uh, in order to make filling pies a little easier, you can do that. That's clever. Huh? That's clever. Genius. Yes, I know that. Uh, and then uh, you can do it one person. I used to need two people, you know, like, now I thought about that and that'll work. Pretty cool. And Steve move, will move put what, the Ken? top on Me? and crimp them up. Move back. Okay. And uh, don't forget to show that camera over there, Jeff. There you go. Wait, and and wait. that one over there. <laughs> now, would you put any uh, dust, in, dust it with a little red cinnamon. cinnamon? Cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I forgot the cinnamon. I have it. I didn't forget it. Okay. Now, see, he's not overfilling them because he's going to spread that around. You want all these done? Sure. But isn't that, <laughs> isn't, isn't that a great gift to bring to a, a Friday night dinner party? I mean, the, your friends are going to love you. I mean, instead of a bottle of wine, you're, you're bringing one of these cakes, uh, pies. And a little cinnamon on top. They are a little overfilled. Steve bought the cheap pie shells. No, Paula bought them. <laughs> <laughs> There's better ones? There's deeper ones. Oh, okay. I it's didn't okay. Know. It'll all be fine. 
because these are domed, the lids that come with them. So when you put them back on and you crimp them, that's what they look like. And that is a nice thing to bring for at 11 o'clock to eat. <laughs> Coming out? Okay. Yeah, she's done. Now, what are you going to do with these five pies? Ah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a wonderful thing. I got to tell you about, you know, you're a little too young to need this. But uh, as you get older, you got to go see a specialist, an eye specialist, a stomach specialist, a foot specialist. Where are the tops? Uh, they're somewhere. I saw Well, we'll these. just have to eat these. Well, we'll find them in a minute. Um, but what I'm going to do with them is, I end up going to these doctors, and I'm sure Jeff does too. They say, come at 3 o'clock, bring war and peace. They make 20 appointments for 3 o'clock. You're going to sit there. Not me. I don't sit and wait for appointments. Not because I'm, you know, some angry Donald Trump. What I do is oh. I walk in with ice cream. And uh, I, I, I bring ice cream with me. It gets me right to the front of the line. I also learn, though, instead of just giving it to the receptionist, uh, oh, fine, thanks. I'll put that in the freezer for the doctor. No, I'm going to give it to him. Um, I'll, I'll just sit here with it. And, oh, by the way, it's melting. And, and I bring cups and spoons, too, uh, or dishes and spoons. And I'm telling you, you'll get right in. And if you go to as many doctors as he does, you need a lot of pies. You bet. I, I lost uh, sight in an eye uh, years ago. And there was this great specialist in New York, terrific man, uh, but you're told you're going you're gonna to sit for about four hours. He only takes odd cases, and I'm as odd as they get. I don't know. They have to be here you somewhere. You took them off. I know. I hope they're not in the trash. No. They wouldn't be. Um, so anyway, I'm bringing ice cream four times in a row and getting right in. One day, I bring ice cream, and I wait for three and a half hours. And I'm on first-name basis with a doc, and I said, Hey, Jeff, what's the story? I brought you ice cream. He said, yeah, but the lady before you bought brownies, I wasn't hungry. <laughs> and the lady was also a regular, and she'd seen what I was doing. Oh, it made me mad. We're falling behind. Time-wise? No, ice cream-wise. Oh, okay. Come and try some of this. And if you want a pie, just ask Steve. He'll be happy to give you one. <laughs> Crystal, did you see what I did with the tops? I didn't either. Now, if I were making this for customers, I would have added some. No, I didn't throw them out. Either chips or nuts or something. Spoons, right here. Excuse me. Girl.